uh, tomorrow at noon. So today we're doing working with a seller and um, the neighbor directly across the street from me, I believe their mother just recently passed away and they're a little older. So they're living in the home now. So I'm just going to use them as an example. I'm always outside with my dogs. I throw balls to them. And so all the neighbors kind of know me. So let's just say that hypothetically I'm out there. The neighbor walks out to get his mail. I'm like, hey, how you doing? And he's like, oh, we're about to interview some agents. We're going to be selling our house. And I go, oh, I'd be, you know, I'd be happy to help you probably give you a, a better uh, deal where you net more since you're my neighbor. And um, we start talking and he goes, yeah, well, why don't you come over tomorrow about, you know, 10 a.m.? So um, that's really all I need. You know, I probably go ahead and get his cell phone. Um, I know he's my neighbor and I can pull up his address. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into MLS and I'm going to say right now I should be sharing the screen. I'm off mute and I'm um, showing my video. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go into the MLS and uh, we'll start always at the beginning. So that's going to be matrix.netris.net. And I'm going to log in with my license number and my own password. When I log in, I'm going to get a screen that has a bunch of boxes. And if you put this website on your phone, these boxes will be vertical. You're always going to hit the one in the left corner. And it's just Netris Matrix. That's our MLS. When you click on it, the easiest thing to do is to see if the home was ever in since 2003. So I'm going to go right here to this search square, which I put in the middle, and I'm going to go 8008 Fall Meadow, because I know the address is 8008 and the street is Fall Meadow and it's one word. I'm going to hit search and see if it ever came up in the MLS as an active listing that's been closed. And you can see that it's not. So now I need to hover over the search tab and go all the way down to public record. And here I'm going to go 8008 Fall Meadow and hit an asterisk. Okay. Now, the reason I put the asterisk is that kind of wild cards that name. So 8008 Fall Meadow. And you can see that right now there's one match. When I hit results, that's going to be this house across the street. I'm going to click on the property ID number. And that's going to give me this name right here. And that's the seller. Okay. So keeping that open, I'm going to, because I want to have this screen always, I'm going to go into MLS on another tab. And I'm going to go ahead and do a CMA. So I would absolutely print this. I would absolutely print this. And then I'm going to go here to search residential detailed. And that gets me into my MLS. Okay, so residential detailed. And I'm going to select all in the left corner and change pending to 180 days and close to 180 days. And then here, my subdivision is Crystal Creek. And again, what you'll see there is I did crystal and then C-R-E-E -E with the asterisk. That's the shift in the eight button. And that basically wild cards that subdivision name. Now, that could be a common subdivision name in the MLS for DFW. So now I'm going to go over here and type in Plano. And I have to select it. And now you'll see it went from six to one. So that means there are five other homes that are in a subdivision called Crystal Creek, but not in Plano. Okay. So I'm probably going to go up here to pending and go back 400 days. And I'm probably going to go here to closed and go back 400 days. And you can see there's now three matches. So I'm going to hit results. I'm going to check mark the box above the first one. Hit quick CMA. And it does a CMA for me. And so these are two houses in the neighborhood. And looking at the tax roll of the property. So first off, I'm going to hit quick CMA after I check mark the box above the first one. And you'll see that I have a CMA here. I'm going to save it. 
to my computer, 8008 Palmetto CMA, okay? So now I have it saved. And now I'm gonna go back into the MLS because I need to find out how big that home was. That's why I told you I would have printed the tax roll. You'll see here, there's one match. When I click on property ID and I scroll down, it looks like the square footage is 3764. Okay, so this home across the street is 3764 square feet. Well, here's my CMA and it looks like this bottom one here on means, it was 3844 square feet. It had a pool, that one across the street doesn't, and it closed June of last year. So both of them closed last year. Well, what that tells me, number one, is that there's no activity in here, which is good. And across the street, if it was in good shape, I'd probably tell them to start at 850 or 900. Now, I'd probably text him right now and go, hey, it's Doug, I'm, I'll see you tomorrow at 10. Not a lot of activity in the subdivision. I'm thinking your home's probably in the 800 to 900 range. What were you thinking? And then I just shut up and wait for them to reply. If they reply 900, I'll go, boom, let's do it. Because you can see that this is the only activity. And look at the days on market, 2 and 13. Now, I'm real close to the tollway. I'm real close to 121. I'm close to Children's Legacy. Um, I'm close to Frisco. So it could be that you know, we, we get some activity. So if he says, let's do 900, then I'm going to just say, boom, see you tomorrow. So, so far I printed the tax roll. I've printed a CMA and now I need to do three net sheets. Now this is the app called chicagoagent.com. Well, I'm sorry. This is the website. The app is actually called Chicago agent, one word space O N E. And I use it every day, the app on my phone. So this is the website. When you log in the first time, they're going to ask you to create an account and you'll put in your name, your email, all that. It'll ask you to pick a location of a title company. Just pick any of them. And it'll say, who is your marketing rep? And one option says, I don't have one. And it'll open up and you'll be at this screen. If it's on your web, on the web, it'll be on this screen. You'll, when it opens, it'll be under a buyer tab. So it'll look like this. And at the top, you'll see these little tabs. You want to click seller. And then basically what you're going to do is go to sales price and you're going to go 900. Now you can look at the tax roll and you could see what the taxes were for last year. And you'll see that they were 11,210 right there. So when I go back to the net sheet, the first thing I'm going to do is go down here and this will say 6% right here. So I have 900 and as the sales price, <clears throat> I have 6%. And let's say that I'm going to give him a discount because he's my neighbor. I might lower it to 2% and hit done. It'll say, do you want this reduced commission for every estimate or just this one? Just this one. So you can see it says 5% there. Then I'm going to go down here to property taxes. And I'm going to put 11200 and I have the dollar sign and all I'm going to do, so I put in the sales price, the commission defaults to six. So if you're going to do 6%, just leave it. If you're going to change it, hit the rotary, you'll put 11200 You'll pick a close date right here, or you can hit the rotary and pick every 30 days out. Anytime you do a net sheet, it'll do 30 days out. All you do is hit compute. And it's going to give you a net sheet that says basically that if he sells the home at nine hundred thousand, he'll walk away with eight forty four. You're going to hit share or print. You're going to hit print, and you're going to print it. Okay, it's, it's that easy. All right. After you print it, you'll scroll up, and you'll hit the back button, and you can change this to. 890, tab a couple times, hit compute, you now have a new net sheet, hit share or print, 
hit print, print it, scroll up, hit the back button, and do your last net sheet at 880. And that way you have three at $10,000 increments, okay? So you gotta hit compute. It's gonna do a new net sheet. You're gonna hit share. You're gonna print it and then you're done. But I wanna go over this real quick. So when you give this to a seller, uh, number one, if I went over to list his home tomorrow, uh, at some point when I get to this, I'm going to go, hey, you said 800 yesterday or 880. Are you still thinking about that? Or you said 900. Are you still thinking about that? And he might go, well, I was thinking 890 or 880. Well, now you have three of them to go off of. And basically, the way to read this is real simple. You had to pick an estimated close date. You picked 30 days out. You picked a hypothetical price. These are your closing costs, $50,169. They're itemized right here. I don't know what your balance is. You probably don't either, so I leave it zero. These are the taxes. So remember when I said the taxes are 11200 That's for the whole year. And now if we close June 4th, the seller is going to be debited January, February, March, April, and all of May and four days in June. That is already done, the math, because they'll be debited that at closing. And that is the debit right there, $47.25. It'll be then given to the buyer. And in November, when the tax bill comes out, the buyer already got their money from the seller. So that's your true net right there, Mr. Seller, $825,105 if you sell the home at $880. Now, going over these costs down here, I like to just say that everything is regulated with the title companies except the broker commission and the listing commission. So you'll see that 3% of 880 is $26,400. That's what goes to the um that's what goes to the um buyer agent. And then there's your commission at 2%, which is 17,000. Okay. And you'll tell them that you're reducing your commission 1% because he's your neighbor. Um all right. So let me reset. So far, we have printed the tax roll, the CMA, and three net sheets. The last thing we do is we go into zip forms. And this is the website for zip forms that I access in order to get to zip forms. When you go to this website, it'll have login in the right corner. You'll hit login. I just did Romero's template. So I'm going to put in my name. You're going to hit login and it'll go right back to the same screen in the right corner. It's going to say, hi, Doug. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Dale. And then you hit zip forms and the screen turns blue. <clears throat> when the screen turns blue, we're only interested in hitting one tab, and that's the new tab. And we only care about the first three boxes, seller, buyer, tenant, landlord. Well, this is a listing, so I'm going to hit listing. I'm going to name it 8008 Palmetto. I'm going to select the dot next to residential and pick the template seller. I'm going to scroll down a tab. I'm going to hit save. The next screen, there's a white summary square. I'm simply going to go two tabs to the right to documents. I'm going to open up the IBS new form editor always. And I'm basically at the screen where here's the IBS. Here's two columns. The top right column is what I just added. And down here, I need to go ahead and add the exclusive right to sell and the seller's disclosure. All right, so I've got three forms. That's all I need for a listing. I have them here, which means that over here, they're one after another if I start scrolling. Well, here's the first page. The IBS, it's completely filled in. So I keep going. Here's the listing. Well, I need to go back to copy and paste the seller's name. So I'm going to copy that, and then obviously I'm not going to have it read like that. All right, and then I'm going to delete her last name so that it looks uniform. All right, here we have uh, the broker information. All right, here we have paragraph two. I need to look at the information, 
And you'll see that this is the tax roll. If you scroll down to tax information right here, you're going to see the legal description. And I'm going to just copy and paste that whole thing. Now, where I'm going to paste it is right here because it's the longest line. And then I'm going to cheat off it. And up here, I'm going to go, oh, okay, it's lot 22, block H, Crystal Creek, City of Plano, Collin County. Now I'm going to delete all this. So I just paste it there to cheat and use it. And then they want the address, 8008. Fall middle circle. That's how you do it. So that's the way it would look. Okay. Um, if you scroll down, you go to the second page. I do live in an HOA. It's already marked, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to leave the price blank, but I am going to hit the begin day to make it tomorrow. That's when I'm meeting them. And then I'm going to go probably five months out and pick the same day. Here I have the commission. Everybody has theirs at six. So if you feel like you're going to give a reduction, put five. If you're going to leave it at six, then leave it alone. If you're going to do five, that basically means three goes to the agent that brings the buyer and you're going to do it for two. Or you can do two and a half and two and a half in the MLS. I don't care. It's up to you. I don't have a policy about it. Other than that, the rest of this is done. It's super crazy how easy this is. It's all pre-filled. Okay. You don't have to worry about anything. I'm going to hit save and then I'm going to hit print because after this listing agreement, I have the seller's disclosure. So I'm going to print. I'm going to print the IBS, the listing agreement, and the seller's disclosure because when I go do a listing, I close at the house. I don't even worry about uh, e-sign or docu-sign. So when you work with a landlord or a seller, you print. Really, when you work with a tenant, you don't do a lot of e-signing. You really only do the e-signing and docu-sign when um, the new authentic sign when you work with a buyer. And so that's what makes this training really cool is that I'm going to print this. I'm going to have my home buyer packet. And again, to recap, I'm going to have the tax roll. I'm going to print this. I'm going to have the CMA. I'm going to have three net sheets. and then. I'm going to have the IBS, the listing agreement, and the seller's disclosure. I'm going to go knock on the door about five minutes before I'm supposed to be there. When they answer the door, I'm going to shake their hand and go, hey, it's good to co finally come into your house and see what it looks like. I've been your neighbor for 15 years. Uh, and then as I'm in the foyer, I'm going to go, what a beautiful house. So what's going on? And then just let them talk. And then after we're finished talking in the foyer, I'm going to say, why don't you show me around the house? Let me see what we got here. As they show me around, I'm making comments professionally. And then at some point, I'm going to say, hey, why don't we get into the kitchen and have a seat somewhere? I'll show you what I got. And then I'll give your Saturday back to you or I'll give your Friday back to you. And I basically sit down. I open up my folder and I go, this is just a little propaganda about myself. That's got my resume and references and a bio. Uh, and you turn it over and you go, this is the tax roll. It just shows that you're the owner. You flip it over. This is a CMA. It shows shows you what what's sold in the neighborhood. Uh, and then these are three net sheets. Are you still thinking about eight eight eighty or nine hundred? Yeah, I was thinking eight eighty. Okay, cool. So you can just give them the eight eighty net sheet. Explain it to them, and then say, you know what? The rest of these are just office forms. I'm going to go over them with you. If you're ready, I'm ready. I have my sign and key box in the car, but you know it's completely up to you. And you explain to them that this is just a disclosure that's given to everybody in Texas. This is a listing agreement. It's going to have your name, broker name. It's got your legal description. It says there's an HOA. I left price blank, but I have a pen. Let's go ahead and fill it in. What were you thinking again? Uh, 890. So you put 890 there. I have it beginning today and ending in about five months. At any time you want to cancel, just call me. I'm not going to force you to, you know, work with me if you don't, you know, like me. Um, but I feel like I'm going to really market your home aggressively and we should both be pretty happy. But at some point, if you're not, let me know and I'll, I'll cancel the listing. Um, it's fine. Uh, I'm going to charge you 5%. Normally it's six, three to you, uh, three to me as a buyer's a a seller agent and three to the agent that brings the buyer. But because we're um, neighbors, I've, give you a neighbor reduction of 1%. So I'm only going to get two. 
Um, now, if I found out they were moving to another home, it's probably going to be equal or higher price. I might do it for 4%, take one, but it will be contingent on them having me as their buyer agent on their next home. So if they buy their next home at 900,000, 3% is 27,000. I'm going to get 27,000 when they buy. I'm going to get 1% on their sale. I'm going to make about 40 grand. So I think that's pretty smart. But again, that's up to you. It's your own business plan. I'll always um, you know, defend your position, uh, whatever you decide to do. And then the rest of it, I just go, it's pretty much standard. I'm going to put in the MLS and put a key box on the front door, maybe talk to them about how they want appointments made, um, you know, appointment required. If they have pets, how to lock them up in a crate. Um, and then I'm going to get to the seller's disclosure and tell them that, Hey, if you're good, I'll start measuring. If you want to fill this out, um, I just need a spare key and I can get going or, you know, what we all thinking. And just shut up and see what they say. If they go, I think we're good. Then get up and go grab your key box and your sign. Start planting that stuff in their yard. Put the key box on their front door. And then you'll start going into measure. Now, the only thing that I didn't cover is that if it wasn't in the MLS before, you don't have any kind of a cheat sheet. So what you're going to do is in your documents, I have a form. And it's this one, residential data input. It's the one added form that you're going to print. So I'm going to add it to the top. And I'm going to show you what it is. It's 21 pages. So probably on this one, I would double-sided print. And what you're going to do is you're going to, with a pen, walk through the house and you're going to fill this out, each page. Because every one of these are criteria that are in the MLS. So then when you go back to your house, you'll call me and I'll help you input it. But you'll have check marked everything on these pages. When you get to the second page, it talks about the school district. Just confirm with the homeowner what the elementary, middle, and high schools are because they change frequently. And then you'll go here. You'll put the bedrooms, the baths. If you have a tape measure, you can measure each room. If you have an electronic one, you can do it, or you can use your feet if you have about a 12-inch foot and just kind of round up, okay? Um, but this is really self-explanatory. And it's every criteria in the MLS. So you'll use it to input the listing and I'll assist you when you do that. Uh, other than that, that's about 30 minutes of working with a seller. Uh, tomorrow we have Javi at noon. Uh, I'm going to be at Career Fair at Champions. I'll be available till midnight every day. And um, I've already sent out training for next week and the Sign Up Genius. Um, I've already sent my videos out for next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, my Money Motivation Tuesday tip, Wednesday win. That'll be posted on Instagram and Facebook. And I appreciate y'all logging in. And I'm going to end the training. And I'll post this shortly on GroupMe. And I'll also send it to every licensed agent via email. Y'all be safe and have a good day.